Hello YouTube and welcome to the third episode in the Monogatari series reactions, that being Bucky Monogatari episode 3. Uh, yeah, we're back here again today for another episode. Uh, I'm extremely happy with the channel growth again. Let, let me get some of these numbers up. These are amazing. Almost 400 views on the first video, 200 on the second, and then uh, we, we put out Land of the Lustrous last night and it's doing numbers as well. Very happy with it. Uh, 30 subscribers, we're popping off. I only have you guys to thank. Thank you for the support. I'm I'm actually really blown away by it. So, cheers. Thank you very much. And the comments, I love the comments. Just keep them coming. And to uh, to celebrate the growth of the channel, I'm going to announce that next week I will be doing two Monogatari reactions of that week. If I can't get two done, I'll definitely do a double episode on next week on the Tuesday. That is the plan right now. It, is subject to change, but I really do want to thank you guys for the support by putting out more videos. And uh, if time permits, then I'm more than willing to put out more videos to to help you guys watch or rewatch this show faster. Because I'm loving it, you guys are loving it. Just makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go through the comments of uh, of the last video. Uh, we have the follow up from uh, Niku Fukin, who said, "Finally, you showed a bit of it." Yeah. I put the timer on screen. Hopefully everybody liked that. Um, it really wasn't that hard to do when I was being lazy in the first episode. I'm very happy that I fixed it. Oh yeah, before I, I say anything else, I'm also trialing a new lighting setup. I don't really know if it's working. I got in new blinds recently, so they're kind of blocking out a lot of the natural light. So we're relying on my light up there and the ceiling light as well. So we'll see how we go. Uh, the next comment, we have a couple of returning comments, which is always nice. Great to see you guys are sticking around. From SL Hurst, Slurst, I think I called you last time. Uh, if you're liking the ending now, you're going to love it when it gets the context later in the season. Thanks for the upload. Uh, it just sounds great, yeah. Really? Like the... the I, it like says the stars. It's really nice. I love that intro. It's like stuck in my head pretty often. Uh, next comment here from Madaoke. He's back again. Um, oh, getting put up on the screen. Gonna have to stay on my best behavior, lol. Yes, you will. Because we will scold you if you start writing some, some clown stuff. But uh, but I have, I have faith that you, you're not that kind of operator. Now we've got the next comment from Mencha Trio. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Down in the comment there. That's how he says it. Where he describes that. Yeah, in his language, it's that's how it's pronounced, which is good info. I'm going to keep calling you that, and you can correct me again if I'm wrong. I'm very happy to change it. He says I've done some excellent analysis, and he doesn't really need to add anything. He's glad I already like the show. Well, it's hard not to like, really. New details that were previously considered absolutely unimportant will open up for you. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. That's why I'm trying to follow everything and keep up with it, so I get the same kind of jolt out of it that you guys get on rewatches on the first watch. I uh, suggest a few shows. So I've went and put Land of the Lustrous on the other slot, but uh, these are definitely in consideration. So I have seen a few episodes of Flip Flappers. I've seen a few episodes of Little Witch Academia. I do like both shows, so I wouldn't be opposed to uh, rewatching them. I do need to update my anime list as well, but it just wouldn't be completely blind for those in particular. Uh, Tatami Galaxy is definitely on the list. It's a, it's on because it's a nice short show. We can rotate it through that Wednesday slot, nice and good like. Um, but yeah, that should be good. Uh, a similar comment here by Panic, who who recommends a few shows, and I've gone and taken his recommendation of Land of the Lustrous and popped it on the slot. I've always wanted to see it, so it was a great recommendation. It just reminded me of, hey, I should watch that. It's a good contrast to Monogatari as well, I believe. Uh, suggests a few more shows like Saranara Zetsubo Sensei, which I think would be a little too much shaft all at once, but we can we can think about that a little later on, maybe if more slots open up or that kind of thing. Death Parade, which is definitely on the list to, to react to, and Great Pretender as well. I've seen a few episodes of Great Pretender and I wasn't the biggest fan, but we can give it another go. Uh, we <laughs> Yeah, we have a, a, a comment here from a name I can't pronounce. Let me... Dmitry Movsisyan. Dmitry Movsisyan. We, we're going to call him Dmitry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to imagine that's Dmitry. Hello, Dmitry. Um, I actually have a surprisingly large group of viewers from Russia, which is, hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, enjoy the show. 
I just I didn't really expect it. Uh, he leaves a comment. Uh, he says he got it from Google Translate, which seems like pretty good English for Google Translate. So. Thumbs up. I love the contrast between Hitagi and Oshinomeme in the crab lines. Hitagi is ready to go to the country's northernmost island, Hokkaido, to eat delicious crab. She is not afraid of the difficulty to achieve the goal. Oshino doesn't want to use this, a lot of the strength to reach the taste of the crab, even when the crab is in his hands. Crabs are so tough, I find this interesting, especially considering it only took two sentences about the weight of Hitagi. I understand it in such a way... It, that not only the memories of the abuse were taken from Hitagi, but also everything related to her mother. Everything from birth to the very last days were taken away. Therefore, the weight remained so small. So, yeah, the, the last part there is kind of alluding to what I said last episode, which I think, yeah, this is what I think is going on. Um, but the first part, I didn't consider this at all. So those two throwaway lines, those came back and created a great amount of meaning. So Oshino Meme was prepared to just kill the crab right there instead of taking the time to enjoy its delicious meatiness. Um, that's a great little metaphor for, for the way those two characters approached that situation. I think that was very well done. It's something that uh, a keen eye such as Dimitri has caught on a rewatch. It's great stuff. Niku Fukin leaves a comment uh, saying that in the end, Araragi gets heavier because it indicates Senju Gahara's feeling to Araragi. This enemy is very focused on point of view, so it's clear that we are at Araragi's point of view because we can only see his eternal thoughts and also that there are no people at all. Because he doesn't care at all, only the main characters are shown or people or we call people who Araragi considers important. All the characters sing in their own OPs, so Senju Gahara VA is singing this OP. So does that mean we get a new opening this episode? That'd be something to look into. Uh, and yeah, so I think that's that's a it's a little bit of a what's the word? It's a very selfish view of the world, and I didn't really consider Araragi like that. But now that you've said it, it is interesting. So he was in a busy. So the school seems huge. He sees nobody else around except for the people he deems important. So. Sendra Gahara, he deemed her important as she fell out of the sky. That makes sense. Yeah, that's an interesting interpretation, I think. I wonder if that will become more literal later on. But yeah, these are the kind of comments I like. Not too spoilery, but keep keep my brain ticking along. It's, it's good. Uh, this comment is from Alexander Dunkelheit, I want to say. The weight gained by Araragi at the end represents that he's sharing weight with Senju Gahara, that they made a connection and that they became friends. If I remember correctly, he said his original weight was 55 kilos, add Senju Gahara's and it's at 100. It's a cute de detail to sum up the story. So yeah, before I kind of insinuated that that might be the follow-up, and now I believe that, yeah, that's probably not the follow-up, considering the next episode seems to go into a new arc. But yeah, it's a very cute little detail. I almost figured it out myself, but probably took it a little too literally, in retrospect. And yeah, that's all the comments that I, that I was going to go through. But yeah, thanks all for commenting again. I'm reading them all. They're all really fantastic. So thank you very much. Cheers. I wanted to do another thing that I did for the Land of the Lustrous reaction as well, and have a little look at my anime list to see what the contemporary shows were to Bakemonogatari as it came out. I think that'll create a bit of discussion, and we can talk about if it's the best show that came out that season. Not that I've finished it yet, but you can kind of get the gist. Uh, this is way before my time. I started watching anime in the start of 2018, really. End of 2017, start of 2018. Um, so this is... Years and years ago, I know 2009 is a spectacular year for anime. Off the top of my head, Fulmino Alchemist Brotherhood and uh, K-On! came out that year. Two of my favorite shows. So, uh, add this one to the list, because so far, Bakemonogatari is very, very good as well. So, uh, let me have a little look here. So, the season that Bakemonogatari came out was summer 2009. And Bakemonogatari shared time with... Um, I think that's Spice and Wolf Season 2. Is that what that is? Let me have a little look. Yeah, Spice and Wolf, at least the second core of the of the, of the show. I have not seen Spice and Wolf. I know it's considered quite good. Uh, I'll be open to reacting to it in the future, that kind of thing. The, the one that's interesting to me here is it seems that a season of Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei aired at the same time, which is interesting. Two shows by Studio Shaft airing at the same time. That's a 
huge production budget for two shows, or well, I'm assuming in Sayonara Setsubo Sensei's case, that seem production heavy. You don't normally see that out of at least these, uh, I don't know what you would call them, premiere studios. Uh, the other one there that I found interesting was Tokyo Magnitude 8, which is another show that I haven't seen, but yeah, Bones worked on it. It's well, pretty well received. I think it's about an earthquake. It's hard to imagine it, that it wouldn't be. But yeah, I haven't really seen many of those shows there. I'm just trying to see when K-On! came out. Yeah, K-On! Sh- shared a season with Fulmino Alchemist Brotherhood. I mean, Fulmino Alchemist Brotherhood was airing at the same time, so maybe I should have a little scroll down as well. Yeah, I mean, it was sharing spots with Alchemist, Fulmino Alchemist Brotherhood, Gintama, One Piece, Shippuden, Bleach. But all yeah, all the shows that were airing around that time weekly as well. Oh, seems like Haruhi was airing at the same time. The second season, like Endless 8 type operation? Jesus. Very interesting. Any movies that came out around that time that are, that are interesting? The second Evangelion Rebuild movie, Summer Wars? Interesting. There's a little bit to go on for there. Alright, so not, not many inferences we can take from its contemporaries, but, you know, it's probably the best show there. At least the best show that I've seen. Anyway, let me just do a quick recap of the last episode, but you guys should have seen it already. So we had Sendra Gahara going to Oshino Meme, bearing her backstory about her mother and what happened to her, and uh, gave asked the crab to give her weight back, her, her trauma back, her memories of her mother back, all those kind of stuff. She chose to accept it instead of leaving it to the wayside, which I think is a good moral and good little wrap-up for the arc. Good stuff to get the show going. Uh, just some expectations for the next episode, so it's hard to take anything into it. I think Sandra Gahara is going to continue being in the show, but I think this is a new arc, therefore a new character and a new conundrum to solve. I think that's kind of what we're trying to do here. And I think there's going to be about 10 billion more pieces of text on screen than I'm going to read. Cool? Cool. All right, I'm going to go get into it. But thank you very much again, and I'll see you in the reaction portion. Cheers. And we're back. We've got the episode up. It's at zero seconds at the moment. The episode time code is 2559. Uh, let me get it up on screen like that. And yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm going to give you a three, two... One, go. Okay. Okay, Mother's Day. We haven't seen his parents, actually. Okay. That's kind of weird that you just kind of let it go. Just... Is he really the only one there, or just he just doesn't see people? It's a nice feeling to be like peaceful and alone. That's nice. Until he sees somebody. Yep, that would be the character that I've recognized before. (laughs) Oh, a bit of an argument with the sister, perhaps? Whoa, okay, this is a new opening. (laughs) Okay, I've definitely not seen this before. This is very in your face. What the hell? <laughs> and yeah, this is this will be the VA for this character going off. <laughs> was she every character on the bus? <laughs> this is really funny. Have I never seen this before? Oh, nice little snail. Okay. Okay, a little bit lolly, Connie. Okay. It's 
This feels very 2009 to me as well. It's almost like a completely different show, honestly. Yeah, okay. Running off to the moon. I just pray that we don't get penny shots of this character like we did uh, Hanukawa. I'm not going to be a fan of that. She's got a big ass backpack. Ah. Uh, yep, cool. All right. Yep, <laughs> we're back. Awesome. I'm going to read all that. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Salt oven, I saw. Salt oven snail? Mmm. Here she is. Oh, new outfit. Yeah, say hello, you weirdo. I was as well. I've never thought about it. <laughs> this is <laughs> going right over my head. It's one of those, is it? Okay. Yeah, a little bit. She did kind of have a, like, razor blade in his mouth before. Just for you? Yep. You're in, mate. I don't understand that. The new ones between... Okay. <laughs> okay, I think I get it. <laughs> she's being a little... She's being a little tease again. Trolling him. <laughs> My turf. It's interesting that he was having an argument with his sister and then went to the park and then found this other girl. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Okay, yeah, you can sit next to me. There's no one else around. I still like this shot. Like this, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Crab touch? <laughs> Oh, yeah? I, I agree. He didn't really do anything. Well, he kind of did some stuff, but anyway. Yeah, 100,000 yen. Stop teasing him. <laughs> yeah, friends. Nakayoku. Lean away from the girl at all costs. Paradigm shift. Okay. So he used to be a bit more of a loner. She's, 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 either she's trolling him again or she's like obsessed with him. Nah, she's trolling him. She has to be. Dude, the eye. <laughs> Good sound effect there. She's 
she's dominating him again. He thought it was something else. Tomodachi. She's going for a spin. I love that shot again. <laughs> okay, that's a reference to something I don't know. She thinks he's some kind of weirdo. What is this? <laughs> Colon cleansing. Yeah, she thinks he's some kind of freak. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good bit, good bit. funny now I'd, I'd like that yeah it's pretty good I don't know Yeah, being a virgin and all. Virgins aren't picky, so it's easy to deal with them. <laughs> I do it all the time. Oh, yeah? There's no one else around, bro. <laughs> yep, she, yep, okay. Mm -hmm. That was the implication that I got as well, but she just came right out and said it. That's cool. <laughs> She's about 2 million kilos now. She, like, destroyed the bench. Okay, so she wants to help out with these problem, which is with the sister. Oh, Interested. Music is nice too. Yeah, as as I thought. Lamenting Koyomi. I can't really help you with that, but I'll listen to the whole thing just in case. Okay. <laughs> I think it was the older one. Okay. The Fire Sisters of the Junior High. That's kind of a sore spot for Senjo Gahara. Okay, so Mum exists. Okay. So he's feeling a little bit second rate. Oh, this is this is cool. Yeah, I mean that's fair, I guess. But he just yeah, okay, I understand. Oh, yeah, okay, so that's Karen. I didn't quite catch that one.
Yeah. Family drama. Just apologize. <laughs> I know it's hot, easier said than done. <laughs> Hmm. Said the same thing again. It is just a family squabble. It's pretty tiny, yeah. Uh... I'm Kuji. Oh yeah, it's those, okay. That is lame. <laughs> it's like getting excited, then disappointed. What's that face? <laughs> also true. Good. Keep it that way, please. What is Solaro? <laughs> Never heard of that before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please just say I'm a Cisco. <laughs> They're really just talking, huh? Henshin? I like this continuous zoom on Senja Gahara. <gasps> Take the next move, brother. You're in. Hmm. Mm. So he feels it's some kind of obligation, maybe? Hmm. The small to man of caliber. Okay, she's back. So I miss like he like, saw it really well again. Is that like a vampire thing?
Hachikuji. Okay, my OE snail. Okay. Oh, she's going to bully him for this. <laughs> Especially after talking about a girlfriend. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> yep, I got shot down. <laughs> I love the cuts here. Oh, this is great again. <laughs> Just getting ignored. Just absolute brick wall. A bit of repeating comedy there. Is it a karate chopper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I agree. This is like assault. <laughs> So I hit you in the back of the head. Just give a fucking clip. I agree. What the hell? <laughs> Hatch, could you? Okay. I wonder if it'll be something with her parents as well to kind of juxtapose. You're not harmless. You just give her a clip up the back of the head. Yeah, but I yell at her. Kirai this. Oh, she's dabbing. Nah, you look lost to me. Lolly kick. What the hell was that? <laughs> I can't say I expected that. What is going on? How did he get in a fight with the fucking little girl? What a what an evil motherfucker. <laughs> What? Wait, that's me. Why'd you beat like her? And then Cedric Ahara's like, why'd you beat up that little girl? <laughs> so I beat her up. This is not where I thought this episode would go, by the way. <laughs> What is her, her territory, whatever she said?
do the eyes. It's funny. Yeah, he's kind of dropped the ball today. He's been a he's been really he's been a real weirdo. I'm 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 with Senju Gahara here. Wakaru. That's nice. At least Centric Hara is being like a friend. I'm a lost young snail. You know, it's one of those, one of those running on the bait type operations. This song slaps. I love it. I've said that like every episode now, but I really do. And yeah, okay, there's Hachikuji there. So I'm going to imagine, yeah, all these are the different characters. Oshino Meme in the background there. Shinobu in the back, maybe? It's Araragi in the front. I'm just reading the lyrics now as well. They're actually really beautiful. So yeah, was this composed by Ryo and then sung by Sendra Gahara's VA? That, oh, wait, no, it was the, um, it was only the openings, not the endings. I've got no clue who sings this, <laughs> honestly. I don't really want to look up stuff either. So next time on. Karen does a... Alright, cool. Doesn't look like I'm missing anything. Yeah, that was great. Again, it was a very different episode. Uh, much less serious, very talky, but yeah, it was very cool. Alright, let's go into the analysis portion. And we're back for the analysis portion of this reaction video. Uh, I have to say, that was a bit of a weird one. <laughs> it was a weird episode. Um... Very different from the first two in a lot of ways, but it didn't. I didn't not enjoy it, if you know what I mean. I don't think it's as good as the other two, but it's good in a different way. Uh, so, okay, let's go through a quick little plot synopsis. For for one, the the episode kind of takes place all in one scene, essentially, which is Araragi goes to the park after having an argument with his sister Karen during Mother's Day. Now we learn later about this argument in the episode and what caused it and what will continue to cause it, and perhaps how this wraps into Hachikuji's story. But anyway, we'll, we'll get there. Alone in the park, Sendra Gahara shows up to show off her new outfit to fuck with him, essentially. Now, this episode's very dialogue-heavy. It was very funny, and I honestly just couldn't keep the smile off my face as these two goobers were talking, trying to one-up each other intellectually, and Araragi constantly losing. Until Sendra Gahara, I, I'm guessing... Is trying to tease him and that kind of thing, but then tries a bit more of an earnest confession by the end, which Araragi promptly fucks up. He thinks he's being fucked with. I think you can tell, you hear the heart, her heartbeat and that kind of thing, and the constant zooms on her face, like she's planning something. But we'll get into it when we bring the episode up. Uh, then Araragi goes and beats up an elementary school girl for not telling him, or being rude to him, essentially. It's unclear. Uh, first he gives her a clip up the back of the head, then he, like, judo throws her by the leg. She, like, kicks him in the head, too, but, like, come on. <laughs> you could give me a million guesses by from the start of the episode for what happens, and I would not have guessed that. It's very funny. We end the episode with Sendra Kahara finally bringing some sense to the situation, and Hajikuji's looking for an address, and we 
try to go find said address, and the episode ends. Leading into the next one. Uh, looking at the episode titles as well, I think there should be two episodes more in this arc, which kind of makes sense with uh, my little setup where I'm going to try to do two episodes next week. So, should work. All right, cool. I got the episode up. I'm just going to let it play and pause it when there's stuff that's worth talking about. Cool. So, yeah, the first few scenes there just explaining that it's Mother's Day and everybody loves the day equally in Japan, but Araragi feels differently about it. I just wanted to pause this shot here, just wondering the significance of the two broken bicycles and the new bo- uh, the new bicycle, the one that Araragi used. Is this kind of some kind of metaphor? Has he been here for before? Has he done this before? Some stuff to keep in your head, I guess. Interesting decision, I think. But hard to gleam anything from it at this point. And he says that, yeah, he just kind of went wherever his bike took him, which has been interesting thing to do. I guess he was just um, riding around because he didn't want to be in the house after the argument, which I've definitely done before. Just take myself away from the situation. It's justifiable. It's interesting that he says he's the only one in the park on Sunday when we literally haven't seen anybody around. So maybe he's the only one in the park on Sunday, or maybe he's just thinks he's the only one in the park on Sunday because he doesn't recognize anybody else. It's only his point of view. Like that one commenter said before. It's very interesting uh, with the colors and the shot construction again. So I like to think of it in contrast to last episode. So we're keeping all of our geometrical shapes and straight lines and all that kind of stuff, the symmetry of the frame that we saw last episode, but we're, we're doing a little bit more. It's very bright. It's very uh, inviting. The lighter colors are definitely standing out more. In contrast to the last arc, this arc already seems a little more frivolous. The, um, the characters even uh, lampshaded a little bit by saying that... Um, what is it that that Araragi's a small guy or whatever they said? He's he's little. It's a small problem compared to the last arc anyway, which was very serious. Interesting, the little contrast there between the two, both visually and in the story. I'm just alone. Yeah, he is. Well, he thinks he is at least. It's a very interesting park. And then we get a little look at Hachikuji. And here we get a little little uh, insight into the argument that happened. If you're going to be like that, brother, if you're going to be like that. So yeah, it was really just one frame here of a really mad Karen. It's It's hard to gleam what has happened so far. But he feels like the mother likes the two better and feels like he would be a little bit not unneeded during Mother's Day, but feeling a little bit unloved. That's okay, I guess. But also, it's definitely something that you would apologize for pretty quickly, I feel. Again, it's a small problem to me, but just because... I wonder what they're trying to say here. It's interesting, yeah? I normally, I really like... So a lot of anime have a tendency to go overboard. It's always saving the world. It's always this, it's that. I really like shows that lower the stakes, right? And make it a lot more realistic. Liz and the Bluebird, one of my favorite movies, does this very, very well. It is simultaneously low stakes, very low stakes, and high stakes. High emotional stakes, low physical stakes. I think that's where you get the anime that I really enjoy. Now we get the opening. Uh, I might pause a couple frames here. Uh, mostly think this this opening is very funny. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a couple things. I'll bring them up. This would be one of them. Reminds me a lot of this, which came out just before it. So you can justifiably call it a bit of a um, inspiration. I wouldn't say homage. It's definitely got its own thing going on. But uh, yeah, love Lucky Star. Good show. Especially the part where she's... I'll try to get it up, where she's pointing. Yeah. The other one would be this one, which is <laughs> very annoying, <laughs> as we know. But uh, but yeah. Oh my god, look at them all. But yeah, I mean, kind of the point of the opening is that it's 
obnoxious, in-your-face, kind of bratty. Matches the character a lot. Uh, I enjoy openings like that. And it seems like we're going to get a new opening or potentially a new sequence for each girl that was seen at the start of the show in the opening little movie there. It's an inference that I can make, I think. Which is good. Yeah. So, to that point, maybe Renai's circulation is one of those. That would make sense to me. Anyway. Yeah, this is, I think, where you get a bit of the, the Umaru-chan stuff, where it's, you know, a lot of copies of the same character. She's even driving the bus there. Look at that. It's funny. It's, um... Yeah, it's chaotic. Lots of different words you can use for it. Uh, to that point, I really, in historically have enjoyed this kind of character, the bratty, in-your-face kind of characters. Uh, I, I talked about Love Live a little bit uh, in the Land of the Lustrous reaction. Um, I really enjoy uh, Nico. <laughs> I'm a Nico fan, mostly because she's very annoying and it makes it very funny to watch. So hopefully I enjoy the character. I, I don't know if she's going to be like a full-on like annoying brat, but we'll see. Bit of the snail imagery. Towards the end of the episode, she mentions that she's just a snail or something to that effect. So it'll be interesting to follow the the same way we had the crab last arc. Maybe the snail has something going on as well. Potentially something supernatural. That's another thing. That's another difference between this episode and last episode. We didn't get any occult. We didn't get any supernatural yet. I will say. Yay! We're gonna read text for a while. Woo! Ah, the dark feelings roll forward as if they were waves. When I was looking, when I was looking up to the sky, when I was looking up the sky, when I was looking up the sky, I don't think that makes much sense, but maybe it does. We'll finish the sentence. I was pretty, I was pretty calm, but now I've come to hate my pettiness. Is this Araragi? Because he is being kind of petty. When I was looking up the sky, I was calm. Maybe that does make sense. I'm not, don't have perfect English. When I was looking up the sky, I was calm, but now I've come to hate my pettiness. Maybe this is what you call self-loathing. Yeah, this is definitely a Araragi. Normally, I'm not the type to be troubled so easily. The word troubles doesn't have any power over me at all. But every so often, yes, on such fate... On such eventful days as March the 14th. It's March the 14th. It's White Day? So is this like the past again? Or when was Mother's Day again? No, Mother's Day is the 14th of May. Is that a mistranslation? Or are they talking about White Day and it's something completely different? Man, I used to be able to read dates... Wait, I think I can. Yeah, isn't the one up there, the 43, isn't that go? Isn't that five in Japanese? And then five gatsu? Ju yon. Yeah, that's, that's the 14th of May. A little mistranslation there that also happened to be white day. <laughs> Glad we cleared that up. I would have been questioning like, what happened white day? Like for like a full hour. <laughs> I somehow usually end up in this condition. So every Mother's Day, he ends up this way. It'd be interesting to delve further into this relationship that he has with his mother. There's no mention of the father either. Special circumstances, a unique setting. I'm very sensitive to such things. I lose my cool and I get restless. Ah, normal days are the best. He doesn't like the difference. He doesn't like the, the big event that they put on for Mother's Day. It makes him feel a little bit uneasy. Please make tomorrow come sooner. It's only thanks to this subtle condition. Salt. Oven salt. Oven salt. That the episode with the snail had started. Looking at, looking at it the other way around, perhaps the episode wouldn't have had a beginning if it weren't for that condition. Like, a, I think a, a commenter said that I don't need to read all of these. I'm going to continue to do it because I want the full experience, but... Yeah, this is kind of just a little bit of background to the episode at hand. Okay. I thought somebody had left a dead dog here, but it's just you, Araragi. She showed up in a cute new outfit to tease him, and she's going to do it for like a good 15 minutes, so buckle in. I think this 
frame here is pretty well constructed. So you've got both. So you've got the eye, then you've got Senju Gahara in the eye, and then you've got the heart in the center of the eye. It's got kind of like, where is it? Kind of like that there. They've got hearts in their eyes a lot. Um, but yeah, just good framing. Makes it clear what, what he's talking about when he says that he was fascinated. Whether it's physical or emotional, you be the judge. <laughs> if somebody that understands Japanese could tell me what this means, I've read it a couple times now and I just, I don't, I completely over my head. This outfit is very different from what she was wearing before. True, both colors wise and styles wise, I would say. Uh, it's almost like she's a brand new person after she got her weight back. Kind of a nice little. Uh, both detail in the character writing and the animation that's kind of linked. It's nice. She bought the outfit to show it to him first. I think there's some truth to this. I think that she actually did, but she's also trying to get a reaction out of him. And it kind of works by the end, I think. I didn't want to show you them, Araragi. I wanted you to see them. The nuance is completely different. I think we understand the nuance. <laughs> A little bit. I, I I hope we do. This used to be Sendra Gahara's turf. Hence why she knows the area and can tell Hachikuji later about certain things. Maybe it gives... Why was Sendra Gahara out and about? How did she know that Araragi was there to show off the outfit? Interesting. Okay. A few things to consider, I think. Was she stalking him? <laughs> Potentially. She used to live here, and then it all changed. Okay. But she's not too sentimental about it. Yeah, they're kind of lamenting the passage of time and what it does to the places of your childhood and that kind of thing. It's all kind of linking back to this this childhood, younger, family connection type theme that they've got going on in this episode. I think eventually Hachikuji's thing is going to have something to do with her parents as well. That would be my little prediction. It's definitely uh, it reinforced by the childish imagery that we see a lot in this episode of the playground and the park that he's in. Even the colors here and the, the rotunda, I guess you would call it, that they've got going on. For some reason, it evokes childhood in me. It makes me think about... When I was very young, I'm kind of, I kind of got the same color scheme going on with my hat and my, and my uh, jumper as well. Uh, yeah, I just found it interesting that in this episode, that's all about family and, you know, connections and Mother's Day and childhood and all these things. We have the symbolism of a, of a park, but not only a park, an empty park. Come on, look at this little look. Our rug, you're in, mate. You're in. But she's also playing hard to get a little bit, and she's teasing him a lot, so it's hard to really pick up on the cues there. It's funny. It's uh, it's endearing. See, I, I want to thank you in a different way than Mr. Oshino. Oshino-san. I like how across this scene he gets pushed further and further back. It's kind of like a, a extension of, in the last episode, how he kept switching the sides of the room to the opposite of Sentra Gahara. He just really wants to get away from her. When she's being so intimate, he gets embarrassed easily, hence why she calls him a virgin a lot. You don't seem like the sort to make friends easily. I didn't until I had a paradigm shift last spring. Of a spring vacation. I wonder if we'll get a flashback to that. He definitely does seem like the type that keeps to himself, but potentially... His time with Hanakawa? Maybe? His time with Hanakawa, or his time getting rid of his vampirism, or any of these things really well let me think about it over spring break so spring would be our autumn so last year last year like april may ish it's unclear at this time <laughs> i don't know the school schedule in japan very well how about you senjo gahara i was like that until yesterday so yeah she was keeping to herself until yesterday. So at this point, she she clearly likes him, right? But she also likes to troll him. It's kind of like... She likes him. Yeah, she likes him. 
and she yeah, she debates him in the end, and then we get this little lovely scene here, this little break that says back to the main story. Very meta. I like it. It's it's funny. So this a uh, very jokey kind of uh, vibe with this episode. It's very different again from the last episode. So yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about before with the playground imagery and Sendra Gahara just having a whale of a time playing on it. Whether it's world conquest, eternal life, or to defeat the Saiyans that are coming to Earth. Are you saying you're more powerful than Shen Long? I don't know what that is. I'm going to look it up. Oh, yeah, of course it's a Dragon Ball thing. I'm I'm dumb. And Shen Long's the dragon, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't watched Dragon Ball, but I, I should know what a Saiyan is. That just completely skipped my mind. I, I don't know why. And she goes along with the bit. She's a she's a based Dragon Ball enjoyer. I'm not a pervert, he says, while, you know, staring directly at her ass hole. <laughs> you think I'm some kind of pervert? Yes. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> so she calls him a virgin for like three straight minutes um, in different ways. And then it's like, it's not like you've done that much either. And then he pushes a bit further and she's like, yeah, I'm a virgin. What of it? Wait, what was that I just saw in the background? What are these little, like, emoticons and stuff sitting there? Like, the at symbol and, and all that. What is that meant to symbolize? Very strange. If that were really true, Sendra Gahara, what would you gain by telling me? Gotcha. <laughs> the only type of people that would talk to a loser virgin like you are crazy late boomer virgins like me. <laughs> You're perfect for each other. It's wonderful. But yeah, now we get Sendra Gahara offering her help to Araragi with what's going on. I think she picks up some kind of vibe that he's not had here for no reason. Something must be up. Lamenting Koyomi, I had a fight with my little sister. Yep, we know, we know this. Very bluntly, she says, I can't help you with that. And the ensuing anime fall. Good, good comedy. It's funny. No matter when, where, or what they're doing, they're always asking the five W's and the one H. Because they hang out together so much. So his two sisters are really tight. And along, and I think those two sisters are also very tight with his mother. He feels kind of outcast. It's essentially where we're coming at this topic from. They are the Suganoki Second Junior High Fire Sisters. Okay. This is an interesting reaction by Sendra Gahara to hearing that it's Mother's Day. I think it says a lot with a little. I'll just leave it at that. Like she didn't even remember it was Mother's Day. So the mother fusses over the two daughters a lot, so it feels like he's a bit left out on, on Mother's Day. But again, I feel that's kind of selfish, but also he's like a teenager, so... Again, we haven't really gone into the details to where I can make a judgment call if he should just swallow his pride and deal with it for one day, or if it's actually a bigger problem. I guess we'll get further context later in the episodes. She said that as my sister, she wanted me to stay and celebrate Mother's Day together. But hey, I can't do that. Why? I guess, yeah, he does. It's, it's hard to understand it without further context. Because to me, this isn't a big deal at all. Just deal with it for a day. But there could be bigger issues at home. If you're going to be like that, no matter how much time passes. I wonder what she was going to say. And then these, he becomes a little bit self-loathing about the whole thing, right? Where, God, why do I feel this petty? Why do I care so much about this? This really isn't important. This really... Shouldn't be what I do. And, and then he says in the next line. That's what I call smallness as a human being. So getting involved with these petty squabbles and that kind of thing. These these family fights per se. They're small, but they're important. Something that would be huge to you if you were a child. I think they're kind of trying to link the theme back together again. This is a very interesting episode. Even still, I don't want to go home and apologize to my sister because I'm that small. It's got some self-loathing stuff going on for sure. Here we are again, acknowledging the pettiness of it all. Look how tiny my worries are. I really hate it. 
tiny. I think we all feel like this sometimes, where we get very upset over things that don't matter, and then we get upset about ourselves for thinking they mattered in the first place. But then you still don't want to take the the ba the the higher ground and go back and apologize. It's very human. I like it. I like it out of Araragi as a character. It makes him very relatable. Your lameness is like pulling great luck, but when you read the contents, it's not all that great. And then, yeah, that little stone tower that he was building falls over as well. And we get that little funny frame. It's good stuff. It's a nice little visual metaphor again. It's smart. It's, it's like visual filmmakers made this episode. Speaking of that, I don't really know what this, this flag is up the top there. Is it like a flag and a bell? And then there's like a curvy like pillar for it? Is it some kind of like modern art piece, something to that effect. I'll keep talking about it, a lot of symmetry and straight lines and geometric shapes and all these kind of things. Yeah, this is a great frame. Again, <laughs> I like it. We go on this big whole bit about whatever the hell sorrow is, which sounds demented. <laughs> like he's going to kill his wife to marry the little sister so that she can... Call him Onichan? Yeah, just please say I'm into incest next time. I don't want to be labeled like a true weirdo. There seems to be like a recurring bit. So she says that she can transform. And then his little, his little hair piece straightens up. We get a lot of shots of just the hair um, to evoke emotion. It's a nice little bit of character animation. Especially here, it continues to be straight. It's a big reaction for a small human being. I'll bring up the audio again here. You can hear it there a little bit, like the heart rate rising and rising and rising. It's like she's waiting for him to ask the question. She's getting nervous or she's preparing to ask it herself. She finds his smallness as a human quite attractive, if you know what I mean. Like, it's personal. Like, he's willing to open up to her. Well, she already likes him, I think. We can at least gleam that much. So we're back again, and the heartbeat's building and building and building. Are you trying to pick a fight? Well, I guess. And that frame of Aragi's good, too. Or maybe you want a girlfriend. If I say I do, what would you do? You can have a girlfriend. That's all. So at this point, at least I'm reading it like, she's essentially confessed. But Araragi's either been... He's in a headspace where he's not taking it particularly seriously. He either still thinks she, that she's joking, which is fair enough because she has been joking for like 10 minutes now. But is he too worried with these small things to even process this information at this point? His own smallness. He doesn't believe he's worthy. All these kind of things. Like his humanness. But that's what attracts Senja Gahara to him, I think. Give me a can of soda or something next time that'll prove we're even. Like he wants to get, be rid of the whole situation. Interesting to follow this this arc through this line of thought. So put a pin in that, you know? It's a great cutting line there by Senja Gahara as well. You really are a man of caliber. Damn. She's not a she's she's not his biggest fan at this moment. I mean she kinda did build up the courage a little bit. <laughs> Again, well what can we do? So Araragi feels some kind of obligation to help Hachikuji, perhaps informed by what happened early in the day with his little sister. Like at least he can do this good deed for this other little girl and that'll kind of make it okay in his mind. I think that's kind of where he's coming at it from. He knows that Senjo Gahara wouldn't respond well to the kids like that. Like, this is a way to overcome his own smallness, in a way, by helping those smaller than him. There's something there, I think. I can't quite grasp it with my words, but yeah. I'm going to go talk to that elementary school girl, and then... <laughs> oh, that's funny.
But she's mad at him, justifiably. And then he gets turned down by said elementary school girl. This is a great shot. It's very expansive and it theme it fits the theme of the of the it fits the theme of the dialogue very well, I think. I feel lost looking at this, like everywhere looks the same. Which would be kind of what Hachikuji's going through at this point, looking for this one address. It's, uh good visual storytelling. And then he goes back for a third time, winds up, and gives her a fucking slap up the back of the head. I agree. <laughs> Don't assault little girls. Like, come on. There's a little bit of mirroring here with these shots of Hachikuji and uh, and Karen from before and that we saw in the flashback. I think that further uh, emphasizes the connection the two have through in the story, if you know what I mean. That... Instead of going back and apologizing to Karen, he's trying to make it up to this other girl that's at least a similar age. Not exactly similar. It's the precious name that mum and dad gave me. That's why I think the connection to the family and the mum and dad and the Mother's Day and everything else are coming up. Now that now that I do say that out loud, maybe she is going to like her mother's address or something to that effect. Maybe she's her pep- her parents are separated or something like that, and she's living with the father. She doesn't know where the mother lives. Something to that effect, maybe. It makes sense for it being Mother's Day and she being out and about. Also, I don't know what's up with the big backpack, but anyway, I'm the most harmless man in town. And then we skip ahead, and then he's like already like beating her up. He, but not before she dabs. Yeah, here it is. She kicks him. I don't know what that frame is. That he grabs the leg and fucking judo throws her. And we can only imagine that Sendra Gahara is just watching this whole thing like, what the hell is he doing? There stood a high school boy who seriously taken on an elementary school girl, seriously fought her, seriously won with a judo throw, and seriously felt proud of himself. Wait, that's me. <laughs> and the little hair again. It's good stuff. Sendra Gahara clears up the situation and is essentially like, yeah, I'll, gu- I'll guide you there. I know I know the place, blah, 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 blah. What is this guilty and not guilty in the background, though? It's a bit strange. Aren't you lost? Yeah, I'm lost. I'm a lost young snail. I wonder what the meaning of the snail is there. Slow. Has a shell. Well, first we get this little shot here of her like looking away a lot of frames in it obviously we're meant to pay attention to it this is more alluding to what her actual problem is i feel something to do with whatever the snail means and then we see in his eye we see like the it kind of turns into like the shell of a snail if you know what i mean we're gonna have to follow that next time but yeah that was the that was the episode three i really enjoyed it it was very different it was very dialogue heavy but I think we gleaned some good information out of this one. I might need to do a lot of editing too, but we'll see how it works. Because I had to get up and do different things a couple times, so it might feel a little bit jumbled. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much. If you liked the video, like the video. Uh, subscribe if you want to subscribe. And please leave a comment down below uh, what you thought about the episode and what you thought about the channel and anything I can do to improve anything else and all that kind of jazz. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Thank you.